Hi guys, in this video, I want to show you how do we fabricate the 3D metal materials at micro scale. As motivation, I want to show you some latest examples. Um, so I literally just printed these structures a few days ago. It is so-called octet. Um, the cartoon here shows a octet unit cell. Um, imagine this is like a like a room or a uh, an apartment. If we put many of those rooms together, we can have a uh, house. And depending on on how much rooms we want to put there, we could, we could have a, like a, a smaller house or a very tall house. Um, by tall, okay. Uh, to be fair, look look at this scale here. Um, this is like 100 micron. And this house is about okay, maybe maybe 150 micron tall. Um, so uh, let me let me give you a feeling. What what does it mean 100 micron in the next slide? Let me put a quarter dollar coin next to the uh, house and show you how big or how small it really is. Look. Actually, 100 micron, it is comparable with a hair. I want to make it clear that the technology we use is not a toothpaste 3D printer. So, so what is that? Um, probably when you um, go to Amazon and search for some affordable 3D printers, you will find something like this. So it is like a um, people, people use filament to heat up some gel. And this gel will be deposited onto a substrate. When you when you scan the gel around, you can make a house. But this house does not have micron resolution. So the toothpaste 3D printer is not ideal for us to make micro houses. So what do we do? Um, another popular technique is laser-based 3D printer. Maybe we can use that. So how does it work? It's pretty straightforward. You have a tank filled with liquid resin. Then, then you shine a laser into the resin. The um, parts that are exposed by the laser will be cured. They will be hard. And the parts that are not exposed, they can be later washed away by chemicals. Um, through this, look here, so we can we can print microstructures. However, um, those microstructures are not small enough. Let me explain in the next slide how can we improve it. So one way to further improve the spatial resolution of the 3D printer is to apply a so-called two-photon polymerization. Here is a comparison, like one photon to two photon process in, in one photon process. And the normal um, laser based 3D printer, you have you have a, like an hourglass shape laser focus. So that would be your smallest spatial resolution. However, if you switch from linear to nonlinear process, your vol volume, your smallest cured part of the resin uh, it is much, much smaller. It's only limited to this little sphere here. In this way, you can improve the resolution. Um, the right hand side is a uh, photo showing you how, how different are they. The, um, the hourglass is here by one photon process. This little tiny volume is two photon polymerization. This slide here gives you a more detailed overview of the fancy 3D printer that we actually use to produce the micro houses that you saw in the um, previous slide. So um, we use a femtosecond laser, and this laser will be um, scanned by a so-called galvanometer, which is essentially just two mirrors, 
one can be rotated around x-axis, the other one around y-axis. The laser will be then focused onto the resin, and this resin together with the substrate can be um, moved around roughly by a positioning stage. In addition to the rough movement, um, a piezoelectric stage uh, will be applied to do fine adjustment. And this slide shows you the real-life photo of the fancy 3D printer at MIT Nano. This is the computer interface that controls the 3D printer. Um, as you can see, our talented grad students just printed some funny figures here. Um, um, the nice portal here can be used to load some CAD files, which means we can, we can first design our micro houses, micro apartments, or, or whatever in a, in a using, for example, SolidWorks or Autodesk Inventor, and then we import them into the uh, 3D printer. Yeah, that's pretty much that's it. Thanks for listening.